So school's out, it's 5.30. Um, I have a headache. Today was a stressful day. I wasn't organized today. And it showed, especially during sixth period. I wasn't planned. And um, I was getting frustrated because I knew I wasn't planned and my anxiety level was just high because literally I was setting up a station's activity at the last minute. And um, the kids were lost, and, and I think part of my frustration was I saw that they were lost, and, and some of them just were doing things that they shouldn't have done, but then part of that could have been prevented had I been clear in my directions, and I included pictures and what they should have done, should not have done. Um, so just sixth period, I was very drained. So during my lunchtime, what I did is I quickly flexed and um, created this took some pictures because um, I had meant to do that and so I took some pictures put them in a PowerPoint and showed it during seventh I was able to eat lunch seventh period went a lot better um, and I just made sure to explain things very clearly and show them things so but I think I was just still exhausted from sixth period mentally and I have a headache right now um, and I also think I'm starting to get sick <clears throat> Hopefully it's not strep throat because that's what I feel like right now. So I just finished grading some, well, students graded papers in class and so I input, I put them into the grade book because progress reports are due this week. Other than that, I'm gonna go home and get some rest. Happy Wednesday, I have a visitor if you can hear. Um, I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. I actually woke up with a headache. I was planning to go to the gym, but I had the headache and so I just took some Motrin and crawled back into bed. Today is back to school night, and so I will probably be here until maybe 8, 8.30ish. Tomorrow's a late start, so that means the kids start school late, but it's PD for us, professional development for us. Um, I actually have to drop my dog off early anyways in the morning to the vet because um, her liver values did not go down, so I have to have her. They're going to scan her um, to see what's going on internally, so um, hopefully everything is okay with that. So yesterday I was just all over the place. Um, I was not prepared as I had wanted to be. I had set the equipment up in the back, except that I did not make measurements. So what I was going to do, and let me actually show you. I cut strips of paper, four different color sheets of paper, and I placed them on the student bin. So each group had four different colors. So when we started the activity, they were to grab a color. And that corresponded to the color back here. I just basically told the students, because there's something underneath this, not to flip the paper over. Not, actually, just not to touch it. And I put all the instruments on top of it. So I have graduated cylinders, burettes right here, and beakers in the back for this side and then triple beam balances. I have the same thing on the other side of the lab area. So if a student had a blue sheet of paper, they came to this and they measured and then we rotated and our students moved this way and then around. And if they were right here, they came to this table. If they were on this side, they were supposed to stay on this side of the room only. If they were on that side of the room, they stayed on that side of the room. And so they rotated around. Um, and the purpose was to help to measure with accuracy and precision. So after they had rotated to every single station, what I told them to do is everybody who had a blue sheet of paper, they were to come to, let's say, for example, this table. Everybody that had a pink sheet of paper had to come to this table if you were on this side. If you had pink and you were on that side, then you went to that table. They were supposed to compare their measurements with one another to see how precise they were. And then once they were done, I told them to flip the piece of paper over and there would be a measurement. And they would compare that value, which was supposed to be the accepted value, to their measurement to see if they were measuring accurately. So the reason I was frustrated was because 
I had set up all the equipment over the weekend, but I didn't do the measurements and I told myself, you know, I'm just gonna leave, I'll go home and I'll do it first thing when I get to school, against my better judgment. So when I got here, I started to feel overwhelmed because when I was writing my to-do list, I realized that I had a whole bunch of other stuff to do, like A through Z. And so I started trying to take care of that and I thought, okay, I can come back and I can measure very quickly, but that was very stupid of me. So I didn't have the strips of paper with the measurements underneath them. Um, so I was cutting the paper, getting all that set up, and then my advisory started. So fifth period I had off, so I was trying to take care of that during fifth period. Advisory started, and then I totally forgot that I had a student in my sixth period class in my advisory class. And I didn't want him seeing me write the number underneath that because I didn't tell the students uh, initially that the number was there. I wanted them to measure first without trying to cheat and look and then write that answer down. I wanted them to get practice and then come back and look under the paper to see if they were measuring correctly. And so um, that was part of the reason why I was rushing. So I got all that set up before sixth period, but then I didn't have like a set of instructions for the students to see up on the projector screen. And then my original goal was to take, goal was to take pictures to explain the process. Then when we got back here, when I was explaining how they were going to rotate, um, I just like kids were like, where are we supposed to go? So I wasn't very clear, um, I guess apparently in, in that regard. Then when I was giving instructions for like, hey, like anybody who has a blue sheet of paper to meet up, go here. If you have a yellow, go here. There was just all this chaos. And so I was just frustrated because I knew that it was my fault. And I saw that the kids were lost and they were confused. And with a class of 30 students and you know, it's just all crowded and i have not used I've had large class sizes before, but my classes weren't that big, as big as they are this year compared to last year. I said that wrong. <laughs> my classes weren't as big last year compared to this year. So um, I just, I was feeling frustrated. Like I was feeling flustered and I just wanted to, I wanted to go home. I wanted to go home and just crawl into bed and just be done with the day. However, it was only six period and I had two other periods in the day left over, so I couldn't do that. So. Before I go over this, um, we're doing an accuracy and precision lab in the back. So next week, actually this um, Friday, you are gonna sign up to come in next week, either before school, after school, during lunch, because you're gonna do a practical, meaning you'll come in on your own and you're going to measure. It'll be very quick because you're just taking measurements. Okay, so it falls between eight and nine as this thing is making up its mind. So I know for sure that the first number in the measurement is going to be eight. So again, it's between eight and the nine. So I know the first number is going to be eight. So then each of the graduation marks is a value of 0.1. So 8.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4. So I'm gonna write 0.3 right here and 0.4 right there. 0.3, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.3, 0.4, 0.3, 0.4, 0.3, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.
right? So like if someone shot all right here, the arrows, whatever, and they were all close together, that's precise, but it's not accurate. Precision has to do with being able to reproduce and get the same result or a similar result over and over again. So you can measure something incorrectly and keep getting the same result if you're measuring incorrectly. But it doesn't mean, I mean, you're wrong, you're not accurate, but you're precise because all your measurements are close to one another. So you can be precise and accurate and precise and not accurate. As I mentioned earlier, the purpose of today is to help you practice making measurements with precision and accuracy. So, in a bit, well first of all, there's some colored strips of paper at your table, grab a color. Okay, so what you're going to do is the color that you selected, that corresponds to the color when you get back to the lab tables, you'll see a color strip of paper, and then also each um, of the instruments has water that has food coloring in it. So if you have the blue strip, you'll go to the table, you're going to rotate among the tables but you'll go to only the section at the table that has the blue colored piece of paper if you're blue. I'm going to assign you to a certain area of the room. So if I assign you to the left side of the room, only stay on the left side of the room. Like I should not see you coming at any point to the right side of the room. Same thing if I assign you to the right, you should only be on the right side of the room. There are some triple beam balances right there in the middle. There are a total of eight. However, four are for the left and four are for the right. I know there's a type one here, so just FYI. Also, please make sure to place materials back where you found them. So I've taken a picture to show you that, that the triple beam balances have an object there. So when you are done measuring, do not leave it on the, the pan. Take it off and put it back where you see it here in the picture. Where it says your measurement, that's where you're going to write what you think the measurement is. Do not do not write anything where it says group measurements because that has nothing to do with the people you'll be rotating with. And the true value will be right there for you. Surprise! So you can move the apparatus. So back to school night just ended. The principal came on letting us know that it's over. We, unfortunately, we have late start tomorrow, so I was gonna have to be up early anyways because I had to take my dog to the vet and drop her off at 7. So tomorrow's PD for teachers. Students start at 10.15. So I'm gonna head out and go home. I feel sick. Um, it's really my tonsil that hurts to swallow and I hope I'm not getting strep throat. And other than that, I am out for the day. Two more days. It is 7.48. I feel like crap. <clears throat> started off the school week with a headache and then it progressed into I don't know, my, it hurts to swallow my body aches and yesterday I drove home but it was like 80 something degrees outside with my heater all the way up and I was still cold so well yesterday was back to school night so after back to school night which I didn't get out of here until like 7.45 um, I drove home with my heater all the way up and then I just went straight to bed um, when I got home and I'm pushing through because I really just <clears throat> I've been worse than this um, however I still have all the lab stuff out and I really just didn't feel like dealing with having to put sub plans together and also I've been a lot um, worse than this so I'm saving my sick days so when those days come. Hopefully they don't. Um, so I may or may not. I probably won't do any videos today because I just don't feel, I don't have the energy to do anything right now. So I'm just going to push through today and I'll push through tomorrow and uh, that will be my week and hopefully I'll feel better by next next Monday. However, on Wednesday what I did, if you were here, I explained we did the little lab activity in the back. I explained that next week, um, or at least by today, you would sign up and then next week you would come either before school, after school, or during lunch to complete it. It should literally take no more than five minutes to go back there to do it, but because it is going to be a test break, you want to make sure that you're measuring correctly. 
And then when you click down, there's a drop down menu and it's gonna show you each day of the week, Monday through Friday, each day is gonna have Monday, for example, Monday in the morning, Monday during lunch, Monday in the afternoon. You select which day of the week you want to come and which time during that day you wish to show up. So if you're like, I can't get here Monday morning, I'd rather just do it Wednesday during lunch, then you select Wednesday during lunch. Also, only a certain number of people can sign up for a spot. I think I set it for five. So once five people selected, for example, Monday during lunch, that slot will disappear from the choices. So you won't be able to select that anymore. Also, definitely check your notebooks because I did leave each of you a message in your notebook on page 10 on your accuracy and precision. So some of you did well. You demonstrated that you understood accuracy and precision. And some of you need a little bit of tweaks, so I will let you correct it for full credit. If you're not happy with what you got, you can correct it. Now, huh? some of them I did not check all of six periods. So six period, if you turn it, if you turn it in after I originally graded them, and you don't have anything to, because I didn't get to you today, but I will. Second period, yes. Yeah. Six periods, second period, second period of the day, same thing, sort of. We never tear anything out of our notebook, ever. Like, you don't tear pages out. Um, number one, because I'll know. But secondly, like, if you have to correct something in your notebook, just like we've done before, I have sheets of paper here, or if you're not, or you're at home and you want to do it yourself, you can either fold a piece of paper, and all you do is you write on top of that and then you tape it on top of the work that you have to correct. And you just flip it, like we've normally been doing, the piece of tape at the top. Okay, so if you did something in marker, you wrote in pen, you can't change it, that's fine. You just get a piece of paper and you tape it over it, and that's it. Okay, so we did start the multiplication. So go ahead and finish seven, eight, nine, ten. Your calculators are in your boxes. You all can work together, I will walk around. We may have a clue. each of the following three significant figures. Select. Yes, Mark. Yeah. 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 Oh, where's this? Did you say that it what if, wouldn't it be 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, <laughs> well, that was week three. I pushed through even though I was sick for a majority of the week. So if you're interested in checking out some of my other clips, you can check them out by clicking on any of the links right here. If there was anything about this video that you liked, then make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and or share the video. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe by clicking on the link right here. So that way you can bond with James. As always, thanks for watching.